first, I just want to say big, huge, massive congrats to everyone on this film. Big winner last night at the Gotham Awards. Best feature and outstanding supporting performance. Kihoi Kwan! Yay! Oh my god! <laughs> this is so, so incredible. So the first question is for the Daniels. What does this award mean to you? That 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 it is being recognized and has been recognized since the beginning of March when it debuted at the South by Southwest Film Festival. Man, uh, two two thoughts come to mind. For, the first one is like um, we we we're, we're feeling a little shock right now. Um, you know, when we premiered this film in March, we thought we would, you know, we'd be lucky if people even went to the theaters to go see it. You know, this was right as the pandemic was like allowing the theaters to open up. So the fact that people are still discovering the film, still talking about the film already feels like such a win. Uh, but last night we were not expecting this to happen. Um, we uh, we have so much respect for the Gotham Awards and any any institution that, that tries to uplift independent films, independent voices. Um, those are the films, honestly, that changed our lives, and those are the films that we really um, hold with like, high regard. And so to be amongst them even last night uh, was already like so incredible. So to win, I don't know. Like I, I think we're still processing because now everything because everything feels like really real in a way that, like you know, before yesterday, we thought this was just kind of like a fun game. Um, <laughs> so we're really <laughs> thankful, but also like I'm. I'm I'm personally still process, processing. Uh, I processed it. It's easy. I saw it coming. Uh, no, uh, I yeah. We uh, it's very. It was very nice to celebrate with a bunch of folks who worked on the movie. And the uh, calling it a best feature is is like absurd. But the thing I like about it is uh, it's vague enough that I get to tell everybody who worked on it that this awards for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of nice. Yeah. That's like. You know, this category, we can tell everybody from the Teamsters to the PAs, they're like, hey, this, you know, this award includes. Yeah, we, we, we did this together. So, yeah. Can I just interrupt for a second? Uh, 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 what you guys don't know, or what most people don't know, is A, the party began in January in 2020 in Simi Valley when we had a opening ceremony for the movie when we were just about to start with a suckling pig it was a traditional blessing for the movie and it was a party to begin with and what you also don't know is that every week the daniels give out crew awards to surreally unsuspecting members of the team who put forth supreme effort in this incredibly in, uh, intense creative experience. And so I also need to let everybody know that awards are very much a part of what the Daniels do because they understand how important the group is, that the experience doesn't exist without the group. And so I just wanted to say that. Oh, well, thank you, Jamie. Jamie, you said something before we went live today to key and i was wondering if you could say that again now that we are live uh oh then it sounds like it was canned um <laughs> what what i was trying to communicate with key um about the uh being given that award last night is that it's in as far as i'm concerned and i will weep as i say it it is as a, as strong an example of perseverance, of belief in oneself, of understanding the realities of the industry. And at one point, he stepped away from the industry because the industry rejected him uh, as an actor. It didn't offer him any work and he created other work for himself. And then his making his way back into being a performer, seeing a movie like Crazy Rich Asians and saying to his wife, I think I can do this again. And then to be able to have this opportunity, this beautiful, multi-layered, incredible role written. And then he won that role through an audition process with the Daniels. The last night's win is an example for every single person who's ever dreamed and lost the dream and found it again that, uh, you, that anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, the beauty of... Key and his 
expansive heart and great talent and I just couldn't be. Oh happy. my God. First of all, Jamie, you're so, so, so generous. You know, I, I want to generous, say one thing. Key, I'm not fucking generous. You're fucking amazing. I love you. Shut up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, one thing I want to say what happened last night, because ever since our movie came out, there has not, I have not done one single interview where I get choked up. Uh, and, and, and again, watching Jamie, you know, talked about me uh, so emotionally just, just now, uh, it, it's, it's getting me very emotional, but my wife, uh, all these months she, she, she put up with it. And then finally, I think in the last month or so, she says, Key, you've, I think you've cried way too much. Uh, uh, don't cry anymore. Don't cry anymore in interviews. Okay. And then last night, when they were, <clears throat> when when Emilia Jones were announcing all the nominees, and and I thought there was no way that I, I was going to win because you know sitting right uh, uh, to the next table was Gabrielle Union, which I loved her in in, in the inspection, and all these wonderful actors. Uh, and then when she called out my name, and I looked over to 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 my wife, and she was crying. She was crying uncontrollably, <laughs> and uh, and I started to cry. Uh, and then I, I went over to hug the Daniels, and I hugged our producer Jonathan and our daughter Stephanie, and they were crying. So <laughs> be, even before I, I made it up to the podium, I was I was I was a mess. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it, it's so incredible. I, I I can't I can't thank our family enough. I mean, I'm staring at Dan and, and Daniel and and and, and Jamie. And, and I'm just, uh, I'm just so, so, so grateful to be here. I, I am going to tell you one other thing. When I've been going around the world saying that like nobody had an idea that this movie would ever catch fire, that like no one making it, like when we were making it, there wasn't one day in Simi Valley where we were like, oh, this is going to be like a monster. And it's going to be like none of us. It was beautiful work. We loved it. Blah, blah, blah. His wife, Echo, apparently did not. Echo, the woman who was crying, did understand what the Daniels had written, what they were going for, and she believed that the universe was going to receive it. So I do want to give Echo a little extra credit here. Yeah, and then also what Jamie said earlier, uh, it was her idea to do the, the, the blessing ceremony. Uh, on, on the first day, before the very first shot, we gathered the entire cast and crew together. And I think in a lot of ways, our movie was blessed from that day forward. It was just incredible. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, first of all, absolutely beautifully said on all your all your parts here. But isn't that what this movie is all about, uh, DK and DS, that to, to live to your ultimate potential? That is what this movie is. And Key, that is... That is what you did is that the perseverance that that every disappointment you had led you to this moment. You were all proof of what the movie's message is. DKDS, you want to comment on that? Oh, my God. I, I, I'm so glad that that's how you sum up the film. I think there's no it's not a uh, accident that the main character, Evelyn, basically is a character who believes she's the worst version of herself. Um, I think growing up, that was actually my narrative for myself. I did not believe I was going to amount to anything. And um, when I did discover film and I discovered this this world in which I could actually thrive, it totally changed my perspective on on human potential and what we're all capable of. And this film, in, in a lot of ways, is me trying to open up this the, this internal conversation I think a lot of people are having right now about their worth um, right now. Uh, because I, I think right now the current system and just the way that our, our, our lives collectively have evolved, uh, we're living in a system that, that really does not allow us to harness our potential. In fact, it actively is distracting us from our potential and dismantling our potential. And I, I think this film is hopefully a, a, um, a way for people to uh, forgive themselves for, for that 
it's not their fault. Um, and then also for them to like see another path forward and then hopefully rewrite their own narrative, rewrite their, their own imagination for themselves in the way that I was able to for me. Um, and like, as you said, the key and, and everyone on our, on our cast and crew, I, I think this film not only narratively was about uh, unlocking um, the individual's potential, but also just like it, it, it's manifested and it continues to manifest in this way where I don't even know where, where the ceiling is for this film anymore. Like I thought I knew, we, I thought we were done um, even like a few months ago, but it, it continues to surprise us every day um, what, what this movie is capable of. Yeah. Although in the movie, you know, Michelle has to learn to love her life with her family and her laundromat and, and quit pining for, you know, fame and success. Uh, and so we're, meanwhile, we're just becoming, you know, rich, famous and successful. And, we don't, you know, it's like, the contradictions. Yes. Yeah, so we're not, we're not really learning the same lesson right? Yeah. Uh, to just hang out with your family at your laundromat. Well, the, this, we have a ton of questions that are being submitted from journalists uh, from around the world. So this next uh, question is submitted from Marian Spritzer, and this is for both uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Ki Hoi Kwan. Let's start with you, Ki, is that how much fun was it to play so many versions of the same character, and was there any version that surprised you the most? Uh, well, first of all, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it uh, when, when the gang news were, uh, offered me the role. And I, I, in a lot of ways, I felt like the acting guy was looking out for me and saying, since you haven't acted in 20 years here, I'm going to give you these, you know, three wonderful roles. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I, I, when I got the script, I was really nervous because I wanted, I, you know, I felt the role was written for me and, and I really wanted to do it justice. Um, and I spent a lot of time with myself. Uh, you know, I grew up in a family where my, you know, in a very traditional Chinese family where... Uh, my parents taught me to internalize a lot of the emotions, which is quite contradicting to what an actor does. Um, and I, so I, <clears throat> I, I buried my emotions for many, many years. Uh, and it was not until I, I got this opportunity that I, I told myself uh, uh, to, to release some of those emotions and, and to put them in these three characters. Uh, in terms of what surprised me the most, I think there was plain Wayman, the, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the tax Wayman as we call him, uh, because I, he's such a beautiful character, uh, who is someone that I strive to be, who is, in a lot of ways, I think that's what my wife is, and I think that's what Jamie Lee Curtis is. Uh, they both embody the same qualities that, that Wayman in, uh, 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 embodies. You know, he, he's kind, he treats people with respect, uh, and generous and humble, uh, and, and I always wanted to be that person. And I think, I don't think I could have played him had it been offered me 10 years ago or had I not met my wife at home. Uh, she changed me as a person. Uh, and I'm so much better because of her. Uh, and that's why it, 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 uh, I get so emotional every time I talk about her. But, uh, but yeah, I, I just had the most amazing time. I, I, to this day, I still cannot believe that, uh, that, that I get to be in this movie. Amazing. I mean, Jamie, uh, you look like you are having a blast in this movie. Like, was there a, a, a version of your character or a part of the film that you loved the most? Well, I, like he was born in a traditional Chinese family. And, <laughs> we, and we also, uh, it's weird because I was born into a family of actors, but at the same time had the same emotional life, which was to hide what I felt. I was raised in a very kind of conservative family and feelings were not particularly well discussed. And so when you meet someone like Deirdre Bobirdra, <laughs> I, that name. I knew her. Hmm. Um, I knew how sad she was. I knew how much longing she had. I have known in my life people like Deirdre, and I also know what power can wield and what that does to a person and how it can create a facade of strength and um, really kind of a an impenetrability, which is what those jobs often do. And for me, the joy was the exploration of all of it, to be able to show all those aspects of her, which 
uh, the Daniels wrote so beautifully. And the other thing I want to say, because I, you know, every time the Daniels talk, every single time, the movie peels the layers of the onion of the complexity of the story. But I want to let everybody know. They never said a word about it when we were shooting. It, they, it wasn't like we had had a big group meeting where Quan sort of waxed poetic about what the movie really was about. We just shot. And we shot in this kind of very fast, frenetic way. There was very little conversation, at least with me, about these bigger themes of the human existence, the human experience that Key just spoke of so beautifully, that Quan just spoke. So what's so interesting to me is that you can have a movie like this with this level of complexity. But the truth is, we just made a movie in 38 days. It wasn't this big esoteric brain meld. It was individual work on uh, each character. And then ultimately at the end, they have assembled something with Paul, their editor, that is just um, extraordinary. Absolutely. Well, it's worth mentioning, Jamie, that, that you came on very close to the start of our shoot. So you kind of, you jumped in and you, we, we kind of, we pressed go and like, yeah, it was very much this. And, and I think that's one of the wonderful things about working with you, Jamie, is like, as long as you understand the character, you are so trusting. And I think that was the strength of working with you is that you, you told us, I know this woman completely. I don't need to know everything else because that's <laughs> not my job. And you had so much trust in the process, and I think you had so much fun because of it, because you were very much, like you said, you were embodying this this person and nothing else. And that's why, you know, that's why when you become the the wrestler version of of Deirdre, you are just you are just fully just an animal for a moment. Or when you become the lover version, you're fully just a, a lover. Um, and I, I yeah, I, I think that was such a. It was such a great collaboration with you because of that. Um, I, I think one of the tough things in the past with some of our work is it can be quite confusing and complicated. Um, and we, we really cherish those kind of relationships where there's that kind of mutual trust. So thank I've you. been an actor for a long time. <laughs> and oh, really? the only, yeah, fuck off. And <laughs> the only job that is my job is to understand who it is. Mm -hmm. That's it. The rest of it, that really does, it's none of my business. What you're going for is none of my business. My business is, did you believe that I was Deirdre Bobirdra? And did you believe her pain? And did you believe her longing? And did you believe her rage? And if you did that, and if I did that, boom, my job is done. The rest, as they say, is dross. So I'm just thrilled, thrilled that the movie speaks to all these levels and layers um, and that I got to play with these guys because I had a wonderful time. And, you know, I, I want to I want to add something too, really quick. You know, even though uh, uh, we only had like 38 days to shoot this, but we start off the day every single morning. The Daniels would gather the entire casting crew together uh, and we would do warm up exercises. We would we would dance. We would stretch. We would do all that for half an hour. And, 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 and then once we were done with that, we would roll the camera and we would not stop until they get with their entire shot list. Um, and, and, and if you look at it, I don't think we could have made this movie if we question any, any of it. I mean, we show up, Dan, the, the Daniels were our leader and, and whatever they asked us to do, Jamie, Michelle, Stephanie, James Hong, everybody was just so willing to, uh, to, to follow in the footsteps. And, and I mean, some of the stuff that they asked us to do are quite insane, you know, uh, but we just did it. Uh, we just we just trusted them. And um, and that's, I mean, I have no idea how they did it, but we ended up with this wonderful movie. Well, first of all, uh, to answer all the points that, that Jamie brought up about all the different jobs that she did, yes, 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 and yes. Mission accomplished on, on all fronts. Uh, I actually want to, the next question is to the Daniels, and this is from Chow Coletti. I hope I got your name right, from Brazil. So, Hello, Brazil. Hello, Brazil. So uh, just going to paraphrase the question here is that at a time when so many movies that are being successful are like the action movies and the, the science, science fiction movies and the comic book movies, you know, here you have a film which is, which is very different and, and is doing extremely well on so many fronts. Uh, 
what is your take at uh, the Daniels on why this film is resonating so differently? Yeah. Um, obrigado. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I love this question because I think as storytellers, we are always chasing um, contradiction. I, I think that is a, a wonderful uh, spark to start the whole um, process. And one of the contradictions we were chasing with this film was exactly what you're talking about. We were looking at the film industry and the way that it was starting to branch off into these two very different directions. And a lot of people kind of were arguing about the value of both, you know, the, the important um, films that you know were the dramas and the the adult films that you normally get in awards consideration versus the big blockbusters that were kind of taking up a lot of space at theaters and you we could see on film twitter this, this argument starting to really solidify and, and get become entrenched and we were like excited to be like i love both those things i love a good blockbuster i love a good action film but i also really cherish those personal films that normally might not get as big of an audience and so we wanted to see if we could combine those two things and to create something that almost allowed uh, a personal story to survive in the current uh, theatrical uh, landscape and we cannot believe it actually worked like that that's that's the that's the, the that's the best thing about it is like we, we chase these things and we don't know if it's going to work but we're so happy that this time it did because so many people who normally wouldn't go and see a film like this had a chance to have a real emotional cathartic experience in the theater which i think is something that a lot of the younger generation haven't experienced firsthand um, so we're really proud of that part. Um, so thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think we uh, we started. We, we mostly wanted to make an entertaining movie that we wanted to watch, and yeah. and then like it got more and more personal as we went along. And sometimes we got self conscious about just how like emotional it went, and like, oh, is that going to be too much for a kung fu movie? And um, and. Uh, but then, like Jamie said, like our actors showed up and just poured themselves into making these characters really real, and they put themselves in it. And and I think a a movie that we wrote that was about a family like became really, really about a family once they all brought it to life. And yeah. and so like, yeah, I feel like that that's why the movie is being talked about now. You know, six months later during award season is because because people responded to those performances and like it's because of our cast that elevated it beyond you know uh, a, a playful sci-fi film you know yeah well and just just to that point you know there's a scene with michelle and i where we're breaking up in the hot dog universe where we have hot dog hands and we are in that dusty rose cat infused apartment together and clearly you know <laughs> All of that could have been told in a very different way, uh, satisfactorily. But the truth of the matter is, it was about a relationship that was breaking up. And I don't know about you, but breaking up a relationship, opening your heart to someone and then having it closed is one of the most painful things you can go through. And what we found on that day was it was very painful for both of them, even though there was an absurdity to the fact that they're hot dog hands and we can't carry the suitcase. So you have to drag it with your foot. It ultimately was about loss of love. And that is heartbreaking. And the day just it was a heartbreaking day, unexpectedly, I think, for all of us. And that's just the beautiful uh, Petri dish that these guys uh, create creatively. Speaking of Petri dishes, the... This next question is for you, uh, Key. It's from Rebecca Murray of Showbiz Junkies. And the question is, actually, it's for both uh, Jamie and Key, is uh, how many readings of the script did it take for you to figure out what this movie is about, where it's going? Key, let's start with you. Uh, you know, it, it, it's weird. I, I guess it's because I, I was so hungry for a script like this. Uh, when, when, when I was scheduled to go into audition for the Daniels, uh, that they sent the script over for me to read so I can understand what the character is before I go in to, 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 to audition for them. And when I read it for the first time, I understood it for some reason. I don't know why. I, I read a lot of scripts that I don't understand. But for this particular one, I, I, don't, I don't understand why, but I, 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 I got it. I got it, and I, I felt... You know, the, the role Wayman was written for me. And, and I even told my wife, as I remember reading it till 5 a.m. 
uh, and I was laughing so hard. I was crying so hard. And I, my wife came out and I said, I think this role is written for me. And then she went back, went, went back to sleep and I was looking out the window and the sun was rising. And I was sitting on the sofa and I was just imagining all these things that, 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 that I wanted to do for, for this character and all the other things, what, what the script was, what was about. Uh, and I was having such a good time imagining just being in that space by myself. Uh, and, uh, and it was getting really late or early. I was scheduled to go in an audition for them and I went to sleep. And right before I went to sleep, I, I said, there's no way they would, they would let me play this role. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, two months later, you know, I got that call, but yeah, I, I, I got it for some reason. I just, I guess it's just because I, I, I wanted a role like this for the longest time. I wanted a script like this for the longest time and it, and it finally came. So. And then she like, uh, prepared more than like any other yes. actor and memorized his lines like weeks and weeks in advance. So then. And uh, anytime we did any rewrites on the script, those were the only lines he messed up because he he, he memorized the older draft. <laughs> <laughs> but Jamie, what about you? Did you have to like read and the script? It, it, the person we should be talking about right now is Michelle Yeoh because I mean, I, I, I got I read it once, knew what I was supposed to do, and did it. That's how I work. I'm not someone who spends a lot of time. As, as, as I said before, as long as I know what I'm supposed to do, as long as I know who the person is, I'm done. Make sure I don't look like me and I'm happy to go. Michelle had such a difficult job. And if you ever, I hope somebody has a photograph of her script. I'm sure Michelle has one. She has a script with... 25 different color tabs on all the pages because her work was so intricate and so so she had to shift between languages and characters in such fast um almost imperceptible ways and i just i i Oh, you have a oh! Look at you. That is Michelle Yeoh's script. Oh, my, okay. My script, literally, just I circled my name, read, and knew my lines. Michelle's script, Key's work. This was a different type of work, and I'm I'm uh, very impressed. Uh, I just want to point out that not only is it going down the side, it's also going down the bottom. Like yeah, it's <laughs> she, she, um, I I wish Michelle was here because. Um, uh, we should all be directing a lot of questions at Michelle Yeoh, who is, um, who is this movie, honestly. Um, and the thing I will never forget was one of these days we were doing a Zoom interview very early on. And somebody asked her about Evelyn and she said, Evelyn is a woman that you will pass on the street without noticing. Mm. And it just broke my heart. I thought, Oh, right. All those people that we pass on the streets that we just don't even remark about them. That's what this movie's about. It's those unseen human beings and who are all still hustling and trying. They all have dreams. They all have hopes. They all have realities. Multitudes. And yeah. Michelle Yeoh, man. Amen to that. Next question comes from Hungary from Aniko Navai. And this is for the Daniels. So the question is, what is your secret in attracting a vast range of audiences from around the world, given so many come from such diverse cultures and backgrounds? For example, your film is still playing in theaters in my country of Hungary, going on eight months now, which is quite astonishing and commendable. So it's a rare feat for any movie, especially in comedy in Hollywood. So for the Daniels, what is your filmmaker secret? Wow. recipe <laughs> wow. i don't know I, I mean i feel like it's a it's a accident that like yeah I, I would love to recreate but like um we almost did the opposite like we didn't we we told the story really specifically as we thought it needed to be told and like we were like 
it's in three languages. It's in uh, Cantonese, Mandarin, and English. There's subtitles coming and going between different universes. There's a lot about it that makes it not. It's also very specifically an Asian American story. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, it's about a specific community that immigrated to a specific country, which on paper sounds like it's sh- it's not an international film, you know, right. like. But I think it's that classic concept of like through the specific. The, the, through the very specific stories, you, you discover the universal truths. And, and, and so we just chased things that felt honest and specific and real and, and landed somewhere that people can relate to, even if they're not Chinese American, you know? And then, uh, and then from like a technical standpoint, I will say that one thing that has really helped us is that we, our background is uh, music video directors. We were music video directors who had to rely on um, making s- stories with no dialogue or sound design or anything. It was all visual storytelling. Mm-hmm. And um, because of that, obviously uh, visual storytelling is, is very international. If you can, if you can see what's happening on the screen and still follow what the characters wants and needs are, mm-hmm. um, then any, Anyone in the world can watch it and enjoy it. Um, and, you know, that's why Mr. Bean is, is the most famous person in the world is because everyone, no matter what country you're from, you can enjoy that. And, and so the, our film is very physical. And we both love dance and we both love movement. And, and kung fu movies, and, and kung fu, which yeah. are universal. And so, so I, th- I think our background in that very visual medium probably helps as well, even though this movie is very complicated. So I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that it's still playing in Hungary. That's incredible. That's so news. cool. Yeah. Hey, next question is from Scott Orland, and this is for Jamie. So as we see, Jamie, your character is very much a part of the frustrating bureaucratic system that we all have to deal with. So when you're on the other side, how have you dealt with that bureaucratic system? By giving them this look. (laughs) (laughs) That that look will do it. Uh, this next question is from Alex. Um, honestly, uh, it is it, 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 patience and honestly understanding that there's a human being on the other side of it, even though their job makes you feel that they're not a human being, that they're a robot, that they're into some sort of regulation and some dogmatic, bureaucratic, red taped um, uh, procedural life. They are human. Their dog vomited, you know, when they woke up and now they're talking to you, but they're worried if their dog is sick. Um, You know, every human thing that happens to all of us happens to those people, too. And that was the glory of Deirdre was that you you got to see that because it humanizes people and if we're not all in the human condition, if this movie isn't about the human condition, I don't know what movie is. Mm, Absolutely. Absolutely. Next question is from Alan Simmons. This is for the Daniels. I think this is a question we would all like to hear the answer to. Uh, Where did the sausage fingers, the hot dog fingers, where did that idea come from? (laughs) I have like an ex-girlfriend and her fingers were just... (laughs) (laughs) Um, the the funny thing is like dan and i started out in music videos like you said and we would chase after weird images and and found that there's something really fun about injecting heart into an absurd image and and that that people responded to that and it would sneak past their usual defenses you know uh because they wouldn't expect to feel anything because they're looking at you know something absurd uh, so funnily enough, like we, we got to the point in the writing process where we, we knew for a character reason, we wanted to push Evelyn to her most uncomfortable place. And, and then we invented the hot dog universe with that very strategic kind of storytelling goal in mind. It, it was just like, what would make her uncomfortable? What would look funny? And, and we, it, and we were like, oh, she would be in love with her auditor they would have something wrong with their bodies. And, and, and it, it wasn't until we came up with ketchup and mustard squirting out of the fingers that we were like, okay, that'll put, that'll be the thing that pushes her over the edge. 
that that's going to work and, all, and all the, because it kind of reminded us of, yeah. of music video storytelling right. you know? and, and the audience over the edge. I, I think that universe in particular is an empathy challenge that we love. It's like in, in a video game, it, like how, how much empathy can you have for different obstacles? That was like one of the, the big bosses of empathy. Like, can you empathize? Can you feel for Deirdre and Evelyn as they break up and, right. you know, the, the, they know, through their amazing performances, the answer is yes, you can. And I think that's really exciting to watch audiences have to like stretch their empathy in places that they would not imagine they would have to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next question is from Dan Tabor. This is for Jamie. So for your screen fights this year. Okay. Who was the more intimidating opponent? Michelle Yeoh or Michael Myers? <laughs> please please <laughs> michael myers is just a dude with a mask on michelle yo i mean what uh, i think it was day two or three uh the daniels had me on wires in in her uh with her knee what is that called what is that pose with the knee up and the arm like this it's what is it's it called? called? The Deirdre Bo Beardra. Yeah, exactly. okay. <laughs> Whatever this was. But the, uh, the beauty of being able to fight with Michelle and learn from her, learn from her vast experience um, was really fun. And of course, way more, uh, way, way, way more intimidating than Mr. Myers, who, um, you know, <laughs> uh, this next question is, uh, well, I'm going to start with, uh, with Key on this. Uh, first of all, this is from Katie Smith Wong, who says, many congrats on the Gotham Awards. As an Asian fan, I am super proud after the success of last night, and I think over these six months, uh, what do you hope regarding Asian representation in this upcoming season and beyond? Key, let's start with you. Uh, wow. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've told this story many times, uh, so I'll, I'll just give a, a quick version of it, you know. Um, for the longest time, Hollywood just didn't write, you know, material uh, or characters, great characters for Asian actors. Uh, most of the time, it was just, you know, marginalized or stereotypical uh, uh, characters with no name or just a couple of lines. A lot has changed. Uh, and, and that's, you know, and that's really why I'm here and, and, and that's why I was, you know, I wanted to be an actor again. Uh, uh, and, and I'm so grateful to, to what Hollywood has done so far with so many great movies, you know, with Shang-Chi, The Farewell, Crazy Rich Asians, and of course now, you know, everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm very, very optimistic moving forward. Uh, but as long as we're still having this conversation, we're not there yet. So I do hope that one day where <clears throat> we don't need to for an asian actor to be in a movie I, I i hope that it we don't have to justify it we don't have to give a reason for it uh as an actor some of the greatest roles out there are written nondescript um and, and i hope you know as an asian actor myself i hope we get to play all kinds of different characters it doesn't have to specifically say you know chinese or or, or asian or, or you know uh, and, 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 you know, that's, yeah, that's what I hope, uh, is, is that there are a lot more opportunity. It, it is already, but I hope there is, you know, it, it's going to be a norm and not an anomaly. Here, here. Um, I mean, to, to kind of echo what, what Keith's saying, like on our set, you could actually see the history of what he's saying about Asian American uh, representation in Hollywood. Um, on one end of the spectrum, we had James Hong, who has been in this industry for longer than most of have been most of us have been alive, and he <laughs> he told us stories. He would tell us, "It's like when I first started out, no one knew my name. I was in I was in the scene, and people would just they would they would yell out Chinese slurs at me to to, to get on set, and that's how he was treated when he first joined the industry, and so for him to be um, in this very special movie and moment with a bunch of other people of different generations, because you have Michelle Yeoh, you have Key, each of these people representing different versions of, of that journey to getting to where we are now. And then finally, Steph Shu, who is just like this, this vibrant new face for um, Asian Americans. Um, and so having them all commune every day for lunch or while we're, while we're rehearsing or whatever was a really beautiful cross section of exactly what he was talking about. And I, I feel like, 
um, movies like The Wedding Banquet and and uh, Joy Luck Club, like they those were the, those were the, for some of the first movies that said like oh Asians can be human, you know, which is such a silly thing to say, but that was the that was the simple profound um, fact of what those movies did for Hollywood. And then you look at Crazy Rich Asians, and that what that said was oh Asians can be profitable you know which is a whole other thing like, oh okay we, we're, we're marketable we're viable we can actually um do well at the box office and then i've i've heard people say that what everything everywhere all at once has done is what it what it's basically saying is agents can be whatever the hell they want and i think that is such a great journey and i'm so excited to see what happens next within our community you know what uh what um wild things our filmmakers are going to be saying because this hopefully our film has opened up some doors for them so yeah we're just really grateful to be a part of all of our actors a part of their legacy but then also part of the the the, the legacy of, of asian american film yeah it's very exciting i'm gonna i'm gonna direct this next question to uh to D- ds so on a film like this okay especially one that is as audacious as bold as ambitious, as brilliant. Yes, I use the B word, brilliant, and as imaginative. So you got two directors here, you know. So let's say you guys have a different idea on how to direct the scene. Like, how do you figure that out? Do you flip a coin? That's from Andrew Sweeten. Yeah, um, we. Uh, it's a twelve-sided die. It's not a coin. It's yeah, it's a like real that. complicated <laughs> version of Dungeons and Dragons that we've worked out <laughs> with each other with a lot of you know, gambling and stuff uh we um yeah i think i think it can be very messy you know collaboration but, but like filmmaking is a collaborative art and um whether there's one director and a hundred crew or two directors and a hundred crew there's still like a ton of people working together um and and dan and i have found that like uh the inevitable disagreements lead to a better piece at the end because we have very similar taste uh but we come at a problem from different directions and um so almost always like someone's i someone's passion outweighs the other person's or one of us convinces the other and it's like oh thank god we had that argument like that we just fixed a problem we didn't know was there or we get two versions and we get in the edit and it and it's a it's a trial and error process where the the movie evolves uh, at a at a faster pace because we're uh, trying to be good communicators and we're like we're stress testing our own ideas, you know, and um, and so every once in a while that gets uh, unpleasant and we hide away from our cats so they don't see us getting frustrated and sad and we work it out and then we try to keep chipping away at the movie, you know. Don't but fight it's, in front of the kids. Don't fight. Yeah, I'll tell this story on on day two of, of shooting. Uh, I got opposing notes from 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 Daniel and, and, and Dan Kwan. Uh, they both give me very different note, and uh, and I looked at them and I didn't know which one, you know. And then they were so cute. They go, "Keep we excuses," and I see them both walk off the set, and then just just them just talking, 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 and come back five minutes later. He says, "Keep this is what we, we this is what we want you to do." Uh, so they never, yeah, they never argue in front of us. Uh, 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 it, which is which is which is uh, really really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have time for one more question, but I want to get all of you to answer this. And I don't remember who asked it because it was a little further up on the queue. But it is a great question. So so the movie is doing exceptionally well, and and it's definitely a movie we're going to be talking about for the next few months. Also, this is a movie that we are going to be talking about for years and years to come as people discover everything everywhere all at once through through the times so the question is i'm going to start with you jamie is what do you hope the legacy is of everything everywhere all at once the legacy is love the legacy of this movie no matter what happens is love and reconciliation and honesty and family and failure and triumph and the quotidian everyday parts of life that we are all struggling with. There's not a person alive that isn't dealing with it. And somehow these guys have made a movie that centers around love. And I'm 
it makes me very, very happy that that's the legacy of this movie. Beautiful answer. How about you, Key? Uh, you know, ever since our movie came out, so many people have come up to me uh, and, and, and told me how our movie changed their lives. Uh, and, and it changed them. It, 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 it made them want to be a better person because of what our movie is about. Not only, you know, not only about love, too, but also about kindness. And, and, and I hope our movie can make people be a little bit more kind to each other. Uh, and I think that is so important, uh, especially uh, uh, where, you know, what's happened to the world for the last couple of years. Uh, kindness and, 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 and please respect one another. Uh, that's what I hope. In fact, you know, talking about kindness and generosity, Jamie Lee Curtis, after we were done shooting, she sent this beautiful post to, 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 to all of us. And on the poster, it says, please be kind. Be kind, be kind. And that's the message of our movie. All right, Daniels, take us out. What's the legacy? I always just have mean spirited joke answers <laughs> that just run through my brain because I, you know, I, I'm scared about being vulnerable unless it's in my movie. Uh, but um, on, on a personal level, you know, uh, this is a real answer and a joke that, uh, you know, now that I made a movie about kindness, I have to be nice to people. Uh, or else I'll come up like a real hypocrite asshole and I'll, I'll disappoint all these fans, which is like a good thing to do to yourself. You know, now I have this little like weight on my shoulders. So the, the legacy is it's going to make me a nicer person until I die because I, I don't want to disappoint these people that love it so much. Yeah, um, that's a good legacy. Yeah. Um, this is the is. poster oh, no, yeah. by Rob Reynolds. Note to self, be kind, be kind, be kind. All right, DK, what do you got? Sort of, I mean, uh, we're so, I'm so obnoxiously heady sometimes, but I think one of the interesting <laughs> things about films and legacy and uh, from, from a creator's perspective is if you set out to make a film thinking about the legacy, you're going to make a crap film, right? You're going to be making something that is meant to be timeless, but ends up not landing anywhere. And honestly, this film was made to be a very quick burst of energy for this very moment, you know, a, a quick reflection of, of what's happening right now, a snapshot. And so I honestly, I hope the world has changed in 50, 20, 100 years in a way where our film no longer feels relevant, if that makes sense. Because the film is a reaction to this, this awful, tumultuous um, sort of uh, collective rite of passage that we're all experiencing. And I think that's why it's so effective and that's why people are, are responding to it. And it's so beautiful that people are responding to it. But if people are still responding to it in the same way in 50 years, that means we haven't actually grown as a society. So yeah, I hope in five years we like fix all the algorithms, yeah, everything. we stop pitting each other against each other and like just divisively driving ourselves insane. And instead we're like this collective that look back at this as a period piece about how scary it was in like exactly. early days. Of so in some ways, I hope I hope the legacy is that this film feels dated and specific to right now. Yeah. Um, but I'm so either way, I'm, I'm I'm so grateful that for right now in this moment, the world is is reflecting the, this film back at it, back at us in a way that we are still learning. But love about. won't be dated. Love's love's gonna be cool forever. <laughs> exactly. Well, and by the way, Twitter is like so old and over. Oh, so I think Twitter, R.I.P. Twitter, and I think you guys had a lot to do with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I just want to say that right at this moment, after last night, I feel like Barbara Walters to be able to interview you all. And, and best of luck. And I hope to see you all again very soon. I hope to, to continue this conversation with each of you in person. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this press conference, for everything, everywhere, all at once. And... Be kind, be kind, be kind. Be kind. Be kind. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you so God. much, everybody. Bye, Bye. everybody. Love you guys. Bye, Jim. Recording.